President, Mrs. Reagan. We are gathered here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Folger Shakespeare Library. As you know, this great library was given by Henry Clay Folger as a gift to the nation. And we put it up on Capitol Hill so it would be available to all the people. Because of your lifelong interest in and support of the arts, we've come here tonight to induct you into the Order of the Folger and to present you with the key to the library. <laughs> I am sure you will cherish it, as it is the key to some of the greatest treasures on earth. It's not going to help the budget a bit. <laughs> it's not gold, nor silver, nor jewels, but books, great books that have nourished the minds of men for many centuries. At the Folger Shakespeare Library are the works of some of the earliest and greatest writers, and of course, the finest collection of Shakespeare in the world. We take our commitment to preserve the treasures for future generations very seriously indeed. Your guests this afternoon are true friends of the library and have given generously to support it. Now if our director, Dr. Hardison, will bring forward the scroll and read it forth, I will, as chairman of the Folger Trustees, present you with our medal, if I can find it, good idea, and the key. Dr. Hardison. No. <laughs> I will read the scroll now. To all here present, be it known that the Right Honorable Ronald Wilson Reagan has been duly inscribed as a member of the Order of the Folger Shakespeare Memorial Library in recognition of his meritorious contributions to the arts and culture of America. Well, and thank you very much. Mr. President, uh, since pens are often exchanged in events like this, I also present you the pen used to sign this document, <laughs> which, is, which, which is a Folger Shakespeare Library pen with an inscription from King Lear, which expresses the objectives of many of our nation's successful cultural institutions. It says, keep thy pen from lender's books. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jane, Dr. Hardison, and friends of the Folger. I don't know, I'm, you brought back a little nostalgia. I could date myself completely and tell you that once in college I played in Taming of the Shrew, done in modern costume, and my wardrobe was plus four knickers. <laughs> I also, however, think that if anyone had been reviewing plays at that time and that college that I might have gotten something like the line that was once given about an actor who played King Lear and said he played it as if someone else had played the ace. <laughs> but it's a real pleasure for Nancy and me to take part with you in this celebration of Folger Library's 50th or golden anniversary. I value my membership in the Order of the Folger as a great honor. In The Merchant of Venice, Shakespeare wrote of a small candle and of how far it throws its beams. And as we look about us in this troubled world with its tensions and complexities, a collection of literature and art, however rare and great, may seem a very small candle indeed. But access to the masterpieces of our language opens a door to the great minds that gave them birth. This light that you sustain throws its beams across our land adding to the perspective, understanding, and character of our people. All Americans can be proud that the finest collection of Shakespeare's work is on this side of the Atlantic. It belongs to mankind, but is possessed and cared for by us through the Folger Library. Henry and Emily Folger's gift for of 50 years ago is today a priceless treasure which must be preserved and enlarged as the inheritance of Americans in generations to come. You've worked hard and contributed much so that the Folger may maintain its high standards despite growing financial pressures. And for that, the country thanks you. 
But just as important has been your dedication to sharing the Folger treasures with all of our people. The constantly changing exhibits of the library and the excellence of Folger theater production serve not only Washington's, or Washingtonians, but the thousands of our countrymen who visit here every year. Your decision to take exhibits on tour around the country, however, represents perhaps your finest undertaking. As your collection moves from one of our cities to the next, Millions more will be able to share at first hand this wealth that is their heritage. It's been said that a true classic enriches the human mind, augments its treasures, and pushes mankind forward another step. Think of the riches bound in the volume upon volume of classics in your charge. Someone once pointed out to me that all the complexities and the troubles of the world and yet there at hand, simply by opening the covers of books, we could find from the past the answers to every one of the problems that beset us, if we would only turn to them and heed those words. Imagine the fortune and ideas those books hold and the progress that we can measure by understanding them. The energy in your one little candle has the power to light the world. I'm grateful for the honors that you have given me this afternoon and wish you continued success in bringing another 50 years of insight and enlightenment to our people. And Jane, even if it isn't pure gold, if it was, Dave Stockman would have gotten it by now. <laughs> <laughs> this ensures that I can keep it, and I thank you all very much. Thank you.